Okay, uh, and now we're going to talk uh, about network programming a little bit, uh, also thinking about asynchronously here. Um, if all you want to do is request a web page in Rust, there exists a nice little library for this, the request but spelled funny library, uh, where you specify this is a get request, uh, and you wait for it, and you retrieve the text, uh, and you wait for it, and then you can print it. Um, obviously, if you want to do something a little more complicated than this, um, then you should create your own client uh, and use the get from that instead of just using the simple request. Uh, but the thing that's in the example here that's interesting is the idea of a wait. Uh, and so we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about back to the futures. Um, you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Okay, the use of await is a little bit complicated. Uh, how much familiarity you have with this is probably directly proportional to how much JavaScript you've ever written, um, because JavaScript is really big on this, uh, and it's um, it's going to be um, something that you're just accustomed to. Uh, by that same token, uh, if you took uh, CS343, because you are, for instance, a software engineering student, you might have also seen the concept. Uh, but we'll give you a recap uh, in case this is totally new to you. Um, in any case, um, the use of await is a little complicated because the get function returns a future. Uh, and what is a future but a promise? Because also in some places it's called a promise. Uh, it is an object that will, at some point in the future, return a second object. So here's an analogy. Uh, I go to Ziggy Cycles and try to purchase a bicycle. Uh, since there is currently a pandemic going on at the time of writing in September 2020 and uh, not much change at the time of recording, uh, and bicycles are more popular than usual, uh, it's reasonable to expect that they might actually be out of bicycles at the moment, so they can't give me a bicycle right away. But they'll take my money and specifications for a desired bicycle and give me a ticket, uh, and at some time later I can trade in that ticket for an actual bicycle. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, you could think of another analogy. You know, anytime you pre-order something, that is in some sense uh, a, a promise that they are going to at some point deliver uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, or some other thing that you have pre-ordered. Uh, and it just might be uh, a little bit of a while before it actually gets there. Um, there are many different possible definitions of async slash await, uh, and the appropriate one really depends on your context. So for that reason, Rust allows you to specify a runtime which says which one of those things you actually want. Uh, the simplest await just blocks and waits on the current thread for the result to be ready. So if it's ready immediately, then just take it. Uh, if not, we will block. So What's the goal with this? I mean, sometimes um, the thing that you've specified is just async and you don't really care and you're just going to wait for it anyway, in which case you use await immediately, no problem. In other cases, you can start something and do something else in the meantime, uh, and then when you are ready to collect the result, use await as a way of collecting that result. That's the possibility. So, um... Here's a quick example. It's fine, says SpongeBob. I'll just wait. Uh, and it is very simple code. Um, there is a, an asynchronous function, hello world, that prints hello to the console. Uh, and then we will uh, see that because it's async, um, when, we, uh, when we want to use it, uh, the return value here for let future is of a uh, an async type, it is a future, it is a promise, it is something that we are waiting for, uh, and then we will block uh, on that future. We are waiting for it to happen. Let's actually try it out. Okay, so a, uh, a slightly different, uh, different example with uh, a little bit more uh, added to it in particular. There's a, a second uh, asynchronous function here, Q, which returns uh, an unsigned 32-bit integer. Uh, and we can just uh, see that, well, this function just declares asynchronous uh, and it returns a result pretty much immediately. 
Does it have to be asynchronous? Well, here, no. Um, but assume that uh, we were doing something interesting there that is asynchronous. Uh, and the hello world function is also asynchronous. Uh, and it, uh, in fact, calls Q. And we ha are waiting for the result uh, because this is an asynchronous event. Okay. Uh, so that's one way that we can wait for it that wasn't in the previous example. And then the other way, of course, is the block on function. So if I actually want to run it, we'll compile it, we'll run it, uh, and it says hello. Uh, and you know, that works as we would expect. Um, let's improve on the example a bit so you can get some more uh, ideas about what's going on actually in your in the program so if I add the uh, hello and world elements here it says hello and then world uh, if we did not do the block on code what would actually happen well we get some warnings about unused imports um, which and uh, warning about an unused variable but we only printed world why well I mean Let's uh, let's add a uh, sleep here. Uh, we'll add a sleep here for five seconds. Just no printed world. Hmm. Any ideas as to why? I mean, obviously, we can use the await approach here. Would that change anything? Ah, not allowed, because it's only allowed within an asynchronous function or block. Uh, we actually really do have to use block on if we want that behavior uh, to take place. So let's uh, get rid of this and add block on future all right let's see what happens uh, now we get world and hello hmm. okay so I mean we'll see that um, what are we actually doing right we've created the the future here uh, with the let future equals uh, hello world uh, and then we sleep and then we print world and then we block on future uh, but just creating the future here in the hello world call doesn't start it running that really only happens when we actually call the block on stuff because it commences whatever is in that asynchronous block uh, and then waits for it to be finished so we'd have to do something a little bit different uh, if we wanted it to start without us, so to speak. Right, so what we'll actually need to do is uh, pack things a little bit differently. So um, what if instead I put print line world here and we'll make this uh, not return anything for the moment. Um, let's do this instead. Let's do this and we'll get rid of the sleep, which didn't do anything. Okay, uh, and we can also run it, of course, in the terminal with uh, the cargo run command, uh, as we'll see, and we'll see world hello. And that's pretty consistent because both of these functions are over with um, fairly quickly. So let's uh, add here a sleep. And try it again. Hmm. Nope, same thing. And if you switch the order of R and Q, then of course we'll see 
hello and world. Okay, yeah, what's what's going on here is that await is kind of like um, block on. Um, it, it requires us to wait for whatever it is uh, to finish, uh, but it doesn't necessarily block the thread. Now, uh, our example is kind of forced because we don't really have uh, a lot of um, things going on. You know, we have our uh, asynchronous functions which are sleeping to simulate that they're doing something like connecting uh, over the network uh, or something like that. Um, we'll also notice that uh, in our uh, configuration file, we have to include the uh, futures equals 0.3 here um, so that um, we import the correct crate. Now, uh, the Tokyo library contains a more sophisticated executor, so when there are multiple active awaits, Tokyo can multiplex them onto different threads, so you can have different things that are sort of ongoing at the same time. Uh, you can specify the Tokyo executor or others by tagging uh, a bit above main uh, and by declaring main to be async, uh, as in the example it's there. Uh, the notes link some more things that you can uh, do with Tokyo and the things that you could learn about it because it is actually really quite powerful uh, and we've really only just run by it the tiniest little bit uh, in this topic so that we could talk about um, the idea of async and await uh, in the hopes that uh, this gives you a bit of a model for the uh, asynchronous I.O. in Rust.